The movie begins by showing Dave Lazuski, a typical teenager who feels invisible at school. He spends time with his two close friends, Todd and Marty, and daydreams about a girl named Katie Doma, who hardly notices him. When his mother suddenly dies from an aneurysm, Dave faces the reality that life isn't like the dramatic stories in comic books. One day at their local comic book cafe, Dave wonders why no one tries to be a hero. Todd and Marty think it's a silly idea unless you have superpowers or lots of money. Their conversation is interrupted when Chris D'Amico, the lonely son of a local gangster, Frank D'Amico, comes into the store. Todd suggests making friends with Chris to avoid being bullied. Dave tries to talk to Chris but is scared off by his bodyguard. Later, Dave and Todd are attacked by street gangsters, and Dave feels frustrated when a passerby ignores their trouble. This incident makes Dave decide to become a hero. He buys a wetsuit online and makes it his superhero costume, which gives him a sense of purpose. Meanwhile, Frank D'Amico starts to think someone is betraying him because he hears about a Batman-like person interfering with his work. He orders a brutal response against one of his men, while he and his son Chris go to the movies. Across town, ex-cop Damon McCready trains his young daughter, Mindy, in unusual ways, like shooting her while she wears a bulletproof vest to test her toughness. Afterward, he helps her up and takes her for ice cream. Dave spends weeks training to be a superhero, though he is still scared to jump between buildings. One day, he sees the men who robbed him and Todd trying to break into a car. Even though he is scared, Dave takes off his outer clothes to reveal his costume and confronts them with a baton. They laugh at him, but he fights them. He gets stabbed and hurt badly. As he stumbles into the street, he is hit by a car. The driver leaves him there, and when paramedics arrive, Dave begs them to hide his suit before taking him to the hospital. At the same time, Big Joe tells Frank that their investigation shows there was no betrayal. Chris tries to talk to his dad about the family business but is pushed away, which drains their relationship. Frank sends his men to deal with a Russian gangster they think is causing trouble. The Russian meets a gruesome end in an industrial microwave, exploding before he can give any important information. After recovering from his injuries, Dave leaves the hospital with new enhancements, metal plates in his bones and higher pain tolerance from nerve damage. Back at school, he is surprised when Katie talks to him and invites him and her friend Erica for coffee. Hopeful but confused, he talks to his friends, who tell him that Katie likes to hang out with underdogs. Rumors spread at school about his sexuality because paramedics had to remove his clothes at the accident scene. Though initially shocked, Dave accepts this new status as a way to get closer to Katie. Still, he is determined to be a superhero. He gets two batons and makes a MySpace profile for his superhero persona, Kick-Ass. One night, while on patrol, Dave sees a missing cat poster and decides to help. He finds the cat on a diner sign but falls while trying to get it, causing a man running from attackers to trip over him. Dave sees the man being beaten and decides to intervene. A bystander watches, but instead of helping, he goes into the diner and tells everyone about the vigilante. People start recording as Kick-Ass fights the attackers. When one of them pulls a knife, Dave bravely stands his ground, and the attackers run away. The grateful man thanks Dave, and when asked his name, Dave proudly says he is Kick-Ass. The video of the fight goes viral, spreading quickly online and in the news. Chris watches with mixed feelings, seeing potential in Kick-Ass, while Frank thinks he will fail due to lack of skill. Damon and Mindy also see the news, with Mindy thinking Kick-Ass has promise, but Damon remains unimpressed. Dave continues his heroic deeds, gaining more support online. One day, Katie tells him about Rasul, a persistent drug dealer she encounters while volunteering. Dave suggests she ask Kick-Ass for help. That night, Kick-Ass goes to Rasul's place and warns him to stay away from Katie. Rasul and his gang attack Kick-Ass, overpowering him until Mindy, in her vigilante outfit, arrives. She quickly defeats Rasul with her double-bladed weapon and fights the gang members. Kick-Ass gets back up, and Mindy tells him they are on the same side. Suddenly, an ambush surprises Mindy, but Damon, from a nearby building, shoots the attackers, saving them. Mindy thanks her father, takes the gang's money, and they leave through a window to the rooftop. Mindy reveals herself as Hit-Girl, and Damon, looking like Batman, takes on the role of Big Daddy. Hit-Girl skillfully jumps across rooftops, escaping with Big Daddy, while Kick-Ass hesitates, unable to follow. 
Dave goes home feeling sad and unsure of himself, crying as he falls asleep. He believes that Big Daddy and Hit Girl are the real heroes, and he is just a silly guy in a wetsuit. Big Joe shows Frank a photo taken by their dead associate, revealing Big Daddy's identity. Not knowing who he is, Big Joe guesses that Kick-Ass is causing their problems. Angry, Frank tells Big Joe to get rid of Kick-Ass. That night, Big Daddy and Hit Girl find Dave in his room by tracking his website's IP address. Dave admits he wants to stop being Kick-Ass. They offer their help if he ever needs it and leave. Frank calls Detective Vic Giganti, asking him to deal with Kick-Ass, but Giganti refuses, saying it's not his job. Meanwhile, Frank's associate Cody is missing. Big Daddy and Hit Girl capture Cody, get important information about Frank, and then kill him. Dave enjoys spending time with Katie, helping her with self-tanning. Katie mentions she hasn't heard from Rasul in a while, making Dave feel nervous. At Damon's home, Marcus, a former partner, looks at their weapons, reminding them of their past as cops. Damon was wrongly jailed because of Frank and spent five years in prison. His wife killed herself while pregnant with Mindy. Marcus raised Mindy while Damon planned revenge on Frank, training hard as a vigilante. After getting out, Damon reunited with Mindy and trained her in secret. Marcus and Damon argue about Mindy's safety. Marcus wants to protect her childhood and warns Damon about Giganti, but promises to keep their secret. Meanwhile, Frank becomes paranoid. Thinking he sees Kick-Ass, he attacks and kills a man, not knowing it's an imposter. Katie hears about Rasul's death and feels guilty for involving Kick-Ass. Dave comforts her, and Katie expresses her feelings for him. In Frank's office, Big Joe criticizes Frank's reckless hunt for Kick-Ass, while Chris listens secretly. Chris, now Red Mist, suggests a plan to trap Kick-Ass. Red Mist frames one of Frank's associates and captures the media's attention. Red Mist contacts Kick-Ass, saying he wants to join him in fighting crime. When Kick-Ass hesitates, Red Mist shows off his flashy sports car to impress him. Red Mist convinces Kick-Ass to join him and takes him to Frank's warehouse, where Frank's men are waiting. Frank is pleased with Chris's plan. However, when they arrive, the warehouse is on fire. Kick-Ass follows Red Mist inside and finds everyone dead. Red Mist grabs a teddy bear from the wreckage, and they escape just before the building explodes. Frank sees his stronghold destroyed and worries about his son's safety. Chris returns and tells Frank that Kick-Ass is not their main enemy. He shows Frank a video from a hidden camera in a teddy bear. The video shows Big Daddy killing Frank's men and burning down the warehouse. Realizing the threat, Frank tells Chris to set a trap for Big Daddy. Marcus warns Damon that Gigani knows Kick-Ass didn't kill Frank's men. He advises caution, but Damon decides it's time to confront Frank. Meanwhile, Kick-Ass plans to stop being a superhero. Before quitting, he goes to Katie's house to reveal his identity. Katie is scared and Pepper sprays him. Dave then takes off his mask and tells her he loves her, explaining he is not gay. Katie is surprised but forgives him, and they share a romantic moment. Dave and Katie start dating while Todd and Marty spend time with Erica. Enjoying a week off from being kick-ass, Dave notices many emails from Red Mist asking for help. He tells Katie and goes to meet Red Mist, who says they are wrongly accused of the warehouse killings. Red Mist convinces kick-ass to get help from Big Daddy. Dave signals his absence with an on-vacation message on MySpace. Damon and Mindy see the distress call and tell kick-ass to meet them at a safe house. Red Mist and kick-ass drive to the meeting point not knowing they are being followed by Frank's men. Big Daddy is surprised to see Red Mist but lets them in. Hit Girl greets them from a window, but Red Mist betrays her by shooting her in the chest. She falls out of sight, making Big Daddy cry out in despair. Frank's men break in and capture Big Daddy and Kick-Ass. Red Mist tells them to release Kick-Ass, calling him a friend, but they take him away in a van. One thug grabs Big Daddy's bazooka and takes Red Mist to Frank's headquarters. Chris argues with Frank, saying his men made a mistake by involving Kick-Ass with Big Daddy. Frank insists that Big Daddy is a big threat and that killing Kick-Ass will stop future vigilantes. The countdown begins for the public reveal of Kick-Ass, capturing the attention of New York City. Katie watches eagerly, thinking it's Dave's decision, but her excitement turns to fear as a live internet feed shows Kick-Ass and Big Daddy tied to chairs, with masked men ready to expose and torture them. 
Marcus watches helplessly as Frank's men beat them and pour gasoline on Big Daddy. Hit Girl, who survived her gunshot wound, sneaks into the hideout and turns off the lights, using her night vision to attack the men. Despite one setting Big Daddy on fire, he directs Hit Girl to defeat them all. She puts out the fire on her father, sharing a final moment before he dies. Hit Girl frees Kickass and they return to their base. Dave urges her to give up being a vigilante, but Mindy is determined to avenge her father. Feeling responsible, Dave agrees to help her, taking up a mysterious weapon Big Daddy had prepared. At Frank's headquarters, his men wait for Kickass and Hit Girl. Mindy knocks on the door, disguised as a scared schoolgirl. They let her in, believing her story about lost parents. Quickly, she turns deadly, killing the guards before they can react. Changing into her Hit Girl outfit, Mindy finishes off the remaining men with knives when her bullets run out. One thug grabs the bazooka, and others trap her behind a counter. As the thug gets ready to fire, a mechanical sound from the window signals Kick-Ass's arrival, using a jetpack with miniguns to defeat Frank's men. In Frank's office, Frank and Chris listen, thinking their men have won. Their relief ends as Hit Girl and Kick-Ass burst in, ready to finish them. Frank orders Chris to fight Kick-Ass, and he reluctantly agrees, while Frank faces Hit Girl. In a nearby room, Kick-Ass and Red Mist fight until they both pass out. Meanwhile, Hit Girl struggles against Frank's strong attacks, getting hurt until she's slammed onto a desk. Just as Frank is about to shoot her, Kick-Ass appears with the bazooka. Frank tries to fight back, but Kick-Ass fires first, sending Frank flying out the window to explode in mid-air. Waking up, Chris grabs a sword, but it's too late. Kick-Ass flies away with Hit-Girl in his jetpack. They land on a rooftop, and Kick-Ass removes the pack. Hit-Girl thanks him, saying Big Daddy would be proud of their victory. Hit-Girl reveals her true identity to Dave, taking off her wig and mask. Mindy goes back to Marcus Care and joins Dave's school, trying to live a normal childhood. When two bullies try to take her lunch money, Mindy cheerfully cracks her knuckles, ready to deal with them. Meanwhile, Dave kisses Katie in a coffee shop, Marty hugs Erica, and Todd reads nearby. Although Dave has retired as kick-ass, his actions have inspired many new superheroes. However, Red Mist, now in his late father's office, adopts a new superhero persona, planning revenge against Kick-Ass, Hit-Girl, and anyone else who opposes him. So the moral of the story is, if you're gonna play superhero, make sure you have a bulletproof vest, a jetpack, and a backup plan, because life's not a comic book, and things can get really messy, really fast.